As you know, Rover is going to be sharing his code with all of you. So whether that's the Arduino code or the Android app brain application that we're building, it's all available to anyone who's interested for projects similar to Rover or for basically anything else where you guys want to hack this stuff apart. And I want to tell you how I'm going to make that easy for you guys to do. So here we are back on Rover's Android app, Tablet Brain, and I want to show you guys what I've been working on and will continue to work on. So here we have the different uh, activities that are available within Rover. This is actually not a complete list, but uh, it's the important ones. And the settings are what I wanted to show you guys. But if we go into Data and Sync, you'll see that we've got some fields here that are actually customized to Rover, and that's, of course, the whole point. At up top here, we've got the web server post URL. So that's the URL to which Rover posts his logs, as well as the, where he obtains his commands with any fetch, um, fetch operation. Uh, the Android camera allows us to turn it on and off. The sync, sync frequency, um, that's actually a default one. Fetch frequency is the one for Rover, uh, where we have, for example, options for every second, two seconds, five seconds, that sort of thing. Uh, distance sensors, we're going to be able to control the, uh, the various distance sensors. Of course, right now, Rover only has forward sensors. Anyway, you guys get the idea. The point I'm trying to get across is I'm not a programmer myself, and all of this was really overwhelming for me, and in a lot of days, it continues to be. So by sharing this stuff with you guys and hopefully collaborating with what you guys use it for, maybe we can all benefit. But if there's one message that I want to get across is don't get overwhelmed the way that I sometimes do uh, with all the technical stuff that's involved in building something like this. It's so fulfilling and so rewarding to actually see something like Rover come together and I'm sure that a lot of you will enjoy the same sort of experience. And by making it easier to get over some of the obstacles that I continue to struggle with, maybe you guys can get to the finish line a little faster than Rover and I can. So let's send over a drag command for a right-hand turn at a slow speed, just so I can show you what a half speed on the inside looks like. So it's half speed and half the distance. So there we go. This is a right hand turn. So the right side wheels just stopped, whereas the left side wheels still kept on going. If we do the same for a left turn, it would just be the other way around. So here we go again. And now the right side will keep going. The left side already stopped. The programming works, it's, it's the math that's off. The goal is basically that the wheels turn for the same amount of time, but that they cover a shorter distance on the inside of the turn. Okay, we've got a bunch of updates to the command center to help me with the troubleshooting and testing uh, that I've been doing, but we're there. Let me show you what we've got. We've got the ability to run a stop command, and I'll tell you why that's important in a second. And we've also implemented an, all, an emergency all stop so the RoboClaw motor controllers, when you send them a command to drive the motors, when they finish that command, meaning they've reached the distance that you ordered, they then uh, run an, a deceleration command that's proportional to the distance they cover. However, because we're running the left and right motors different distances, that proportional deceleration is different for obviously, right? So what we need to do then is kind of adjust that so that the right and left start and stop at the same time, even though they're running at different speeds over a different distance. And what I didn't realize before, they have to accelerate at different rates. So that was one aspect. So the other aspect was the importance of issuing a stop command following the order to drive. So when you see me at issue a, uh, a drive command for either a left or right turn, you'll see me follow that up immediately with a stop command. And the reason for that is basically we want the RoboClaws to issue a full stop following the drive rather than a deceleration that's proportional to the commands that we sent to the left and right motors. We've got everything set up and what we're going to do is we're going to start with a program to straighten out all the wheels and then we're going to issue the turn command. So let's send over the servo command. We're going to hear the relay click now. We're going to let Rover straighten out his wheels and the right turn command is set to go. 
So once he's finished that, he's going to do start driving and then following the right turn, we're going to have him stop rather than decelerate as the RoboClaw would like. And there we go. We wanted all four wheels to stop at the same time and that's exactly what happened. So that was great to see. Um, I know that seems really simple to basically have all the wheels stop at the same time, but it actually took a lot of troubleshooting. And of course, as per usual, in trying to do that, I ran into all sorts of other bugs that I needed to squash before I could actually get to where I wanted to go. In any case, we're there. So all that sets us up for what comes next, which is the actual uh, turn that we wanted to do. We've been working on for what, a week or two now? So we want to have Rover turn with the dip, with the proportional turning where basically the inside wheels are turning at a slower speed than the outside wheels, but are starting and stopping at the same time and are covering the same portion of the arc, so to speak, even though the inside wheels are driving a shorter distance at a slower speed and accelerating more slowly than the outside wheels. Whether we're talking about what we're doing on the Android tablet or what we're programming into the Arduino boards, it's just really exciting to see everything coming together and the options that it now gives us. For example, with what I showed you guys yesterday in regards to the autonomous reporting back from Rover into the command center via the logs, that now gives us the ability to have programming on the web server not just the Android tablet, where we can really have some fancy uh, computation going and logic. Uh, so for example, let's say we issue a command for Rover to drive forward, we can have an if-then logic, where for example, if you encounter X, Y, or Z via his sensors, then perform A, B, or C. Um, and we don't have to have that all stored in the Android tablet where it's hard-coded. We don't have to have it in the Arduino boards. It's all via the web server. In regards to semi-autonomous or autonomous on operation, it gives us so many options because we're part of the equation, the operators. And speaking of which, we're still looking for operators. So if you're interested in joining the team and you wanna have some fun with Rover and help us figure stuff out and maybe collaborate with what you're doing on your own projects, then you know this is what it's all about. And I can't wait to share um, what we've done here with Rover with all of you. Um, so if you're interested in any of this stuff, the code uh, for the Android, Arduino, whatever it is, uh, just let us know. Uh, use the comments down below on YouTube or over on Rover's site. Uh, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to stay tuned and we'll see you guys next time. Cheers.